Ectopic pregnancy, when is it too early to operate? Hello, my name is Dr. Selva. I'm a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist at Makota Medical Center, Malacca, Malaysia. We have heard of incidents when a second laparoscopy had to be performed on a patient because an ectopic pregnancy was missed during the first laparoscopy. I have always been worried about this situation. In this video, I'm going to discuss a case of ectopic pregnancy that I managed recently where I think I operated on her too early. Please leave your thoughts after the video. Madam YT was married for two years without any children. She had already taken three causes of clomiphene citrate and had, had undergone three cycles of intrauterine insemination in another center. Her husband's semen analysis was normal, but the histosulfingogram done previously showed a blocked left fallopian tube. Examination and ultrasound did not reveal any abnormalities. A repeat histosulfingogram showed that both fallopian tubes were patent. Office hysteroscopy was done and it showed a normal uterine cavity. She decided to undergo another intrauterine insemination. She was given FSH injection and after 9 days of injection, two follicles measuring 18.5 mm were seen in the left ovary. There were two smaller follicles in the right ovary measuring 10 mm in diameter. HCG trigger was done and IUI was performed 34 hours later. She came back two weeks after the IUI that is four weeks after her last menstrual period with a complaint of slight lower back pain. Ultrasound showed a thick endometrium with minimal fluid in the pouch of Douglas. Serum beta HCG was 56.6. She was reassured and asked to come back one week later. One week later at five weeks, two days since her last menstrual period and only three weeks, three days since the IUI, she was reviewed in the clinic. Ultrasound did not show any intrauterine gestational sac. There was some fluid in the pouch of Douglas. Two cystic structures were seen in the right adnexia resembling corpus luteum. There was no tenderness in either the fornices. Her serum beta HCG was 6597.1. She was asked to come back the next day for a review. The next day, she complained of slight left iliac fossa pain. Transvaginal ultrasound showed some fluid in the pouch of Douglas and no intrauterine gestational sac. There were cysts seen in the left adenexia and one appeared like within a fallopian tube. The right adenexia looked normal. Her serum beta HCG was 8300. The situation was discussed with the patient. The options were to wait for another day to start medical treatment for ectopic pregnancy or to perform a laparoscopy. They decided to perform a laparoscopy. I performed the laparoscopy without a uterine manipulator. To my surprise, the left fallopian tube looked normal. There were two corpus luteal cysts in the left ovary. I looked at the left ovary carefully to exclude an ovarian pregnancy. It did not appear so. I injected dye into the uterus using a bladder syringe. Both the tubes were patent. The right ovary was normal. However, there was a slight bulge near the fimbrial end of the right fallopian tube. This was most probably an early right tubal pregnancy. Since it is very close to the fimbrial end, I tried to squeeze out the ectopic pregnancy through the fimbrial end, but this did not work as the ectopic pregnancy was within the wall of the fallopian tube. I decided to open the tube with a hook diatomy. Some tissues resembling an ectopic pregnancy was removed. Hemostasis was attained. I discussed the finding with the husband intraoperatively and we decided not to remove the tube. I also decided not to suture the defect as there are studies to say that leaving the incision open has a better pregnancy rate than suturing it. The whole pelvis and abdomen was also explored for evidence of abdominal ectopic pregnancy. My worry was that the tissue that was removed was not an ectopic pregnancy and there is still an undiagnosed pregnancy in the abdomen. The plan was to repeat the serum beta HCG the next day and if it remains the same or rising, then to start medical treatment. Fortunately, the serum beta HCG dropped to 3000 the next day. The patient was discharged the next day. Three days later, she came back to the clinic worried that her urine pregnancy test was still positive and she is still feeling pregnant. Serum beta HCG was 324.6. Ultrasound did not show any gestational sac and there was no fluid in the pouch of Douglas. I reassured her. Her sutures were removed on the seventh post-operative day. Beta HCG done two weeks after the surgery was negative. She also had her menses. The histopathology of the specimen removed confirmed an ectopic pregnancy. 
There are several learning points in this case. Did I perform the laparoscopy too early? She did not have much pain and she was only 5 weeks 3 days since her last menstrual period and 3 weeks 4 days since her intrauterine insemination. I was lucky to be able to see the ectopic pregnancy in the wall of the right tube. If not, I would have missed the ectopic pregnancy. Should I have waited for a few more days before performing laparoscopy? She conceived with the smaller follicles in the right ovary instead of the bigger follicles in the left ovary. That was another surprise. Should this patient have been treated with medical treatment? I was a little concerned that as the beta HCG was greater than 5000, most guidelines state that medical treatment is contraindicated. There is no clear guideline as to when is it considered too early to perform a laparoscopy for an ectopic pregnancy. Please give your views. Thank you.